to start here trying to ask you guys what your reflection what your reflections are on what we played last night because um we, we you know we we're sitting around watching this this taping of it and it's you know it's interesting to actually see what you're doing hear what you're doing because when we do it i feel like i almost black out like i don't even know what i'm doing i mean do you ever feel like that 
Yeah, well, and often you have kind of no uh, perspective on how it sounded or what happened. So it was cool to actually get to see it. With this music, I tend to receive everything faster at a slowed down rate. Certain things will happen that are like very understandable musically. It's like, oh yeah, Mary's playing this chord and then I'm gonna play on top of it and then we stop and cut into this other section. But actually that happens in like two seconds. I think about improvisation a lot and I think about why it's important because sometimes I'm not sure it's important. Like sometimes I do it and I think, wow, can anyone really listen to this? <laughs> you know, and like get something from it. And then I think about what I'm trying to do with the amount of information that I'm putting into my music is that I want to create something that is extremely dense in terms of information. And the thing is, is that, you know, with, with a recorded piece of music that you actually bother to release, to me it's almost like something that has to be listened to more than once because you're not going to get all the information out of it more than once. And I think that the difference between the live performance is that when you're actually sitting there watching these people do it, you see the process. Like when you look at a painting, you can look at it at whatever rate you want to. Yeah, yeah. But when you hear music, it's in real time and, and you know, if, if the information is going very rapidly, you may not implicitly know what the heck happened or what the, the relations are. But I think, I almost feel like I'm trying to, re when I improvise, I'm trying to have a clarity in that regard. And a lot of music, especially, you know, this music has become so normal to us that you forget that to the average yeah. listener it's yeah. probably pretty hard to digest. Yeah. And a lot of this music, I mean, I didn't like love it instantly. It's like yeah. I listened to it yeah. so much and listen to things over and over again and then you start to sort of appreciate different things about it. Maybe part of the reason why people fear or don't like free improvisation is they think it's a total crapshoot. Which it can be. It can be, of course, but I, don't you think that if there's a certain caliber of player, you can at the very least expect something? I mean, yes, what can you, you expect? Um, you can expect to hear those people's voices. Okay. And if you like those people's voices. Yeah. Hopefully you can expect that you won't be disappointed, I would think. I mean, if yeah. I go see a musician that I love, I expect to hear that musician and, you know. Hear them say what they say. Well, what if somebody, somebody's creating their own music and, like, that music is, is in tandem with, like, their lives. And if people start to ex expect that that person does a certain thing and then all of a sudden that person doesn't want to feel like doing that anymore, but they're continuing to do it anyway because that's what people expect, that's really tricky. It, it's dangerous because when you're free improvising, sometimes you have to take the risk to sort of do something maybe that someone else might consider inappropriate sonically or in terms of a gesture or something that they don't like harmonically or rhythmically or, you know, that's, that's the dangerous thing is sometimes you don't even know what you can get away with in terms of even the people you're playing with, yeah. but you sort of have to take the risk of putting the, the, the impetus out there and seeing where it goes. Sometimes we get into these little sections that almost have like a regular pulse. And yeah. like for the most part, most of our music that we've made really doesn't. And it's almost like once you get into that pulse thing, it's very determinate in terms of, well, there is a pulse here. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, you know, there's, there's a million different ways you can react to that. You cannot play with it. You cannot yeah. play at all. Yeah. You could play something completely opposite. You could play something that destroys it, you know. And to me, that's almost why you can't lose when you take those chances because, you know, when you start doing something and somebody else meets you, whether or not they're actually trying to just destroy you or play with you, that's going to be the next, you know, arborescence off of this tree where you go in another direction. If you want to grow and transform, you sort of have to have the nerve to like take these diversions that yeah, people yeah. aren't necessarily expecting. Like I come and out stick of with them. Yeah. yeah, I mean I come out of a background where I've played in a lot of rock bands. There's a lot of people who like my rock bands who simply do not accept or like, you know, the the fact that I do free improvised music as well. But the thing is is that I'm not I'm not giving up one for the other. It just happens to be that right now I'm playing more improvised music than I am rock music. The reason why I got into free improvisation is because I like weird music. And to me, improvisation is one way of making weird music. I don't value improvisation as like, I am improvising. This is the art form called free improvisation. For me, it's just like, it's one of many ways of making really weird music that might even be unprecedented.
I don't want to make music that's redundant if I can help it. Like, yeah. I don't want to make music that I've already heard a million people make. Re-improvisation almost, in, you know, if you're playing with really good people, it almost ensures that you're going to come up with something that you may have never have conceived of or maybe no one else has ever conceived of. And to me, that's the challenge and part of the reward. And luckily, you know, there's enough people out there who want to hear new things. And I think that's what keeps it going. I just read a quote somewhere that says that, you know, to truly be an artist, you have to be a human being. I was, for a long time, I thought that just being an artist was enough. It's like in this ascetic thing where you're like, all I care about is music and everything else can just go away. And <laughs> as I get older, I, I realize that, you know, like if you want people to relate to what you're doing, you kind of have to, you have to be a human being as well as an artist. And I think that like the way we perform, there's a lot of subtleties, like in a weird way, there's almost some theater going on and it's not shtick. It's not like, what can do, you know, like sort of tap dancing. But I think there, there are these interesting things that are visual signifiers in what we do that we don't necessarily do to be like showy. Yeah. But there is like playing is obviously extension of your body, you know what I mean? So there are certain things that are gonna happen. And I hope that people, when they see this, if they don't necessarily understand it, that they see that this is like a breathing thing. It's not this dry, you yeah. know, like academic sort of thing that's supposed to bore them to tears and they're supposed to say, I don't understand this, but it must have been very serious. A lot of the time when I play with really good people, they, they surprise me with their reactions or what they um, insert into the dialogue and I start laughing because I think it's like hilarious because I may have heard something I've never heard before yeah. or I may have actually been surprised or I may be even laughing at like how ridiculous yeah. it is to do what I'm doing. You know, like sometimes I just feel like I'm just like, ah! you know, like I'm gonna just like fall off my chair. Like I almost threw up last night. So there was like one part at the end of a set where all of a sudden, Oh, you did tremolo. something, and or you did something, yeah, you started this and I just started going, Aah! you know, as loud as I could. When I did that, I had eaten a little too soon before then. I actually thought I was going to puke on my drums. <laughs> and to me, that's like beautiful. That's like that's like the human being comedy aspect of this improvisation. I hope anyone can relate to it. It's visceral. It's so <laughs> visceral you could vomit. <laughs> Being part of this music, it's a microcosmic version of everything. You have to cooperate, you have to figure out how to distribute power, you have to figure out when to just be passive, you have to figure out all these things that are all have to do with interaction with people. And I think like if people, you know, saw improvised music in that way, they would see it in this very literal sense, which is like, yeah, it's a it's dialogue. It's not abstract really. Yeah, it's not way. abstract. And I think that if people just understood that, well yes, this is a dialogue, but it's a musical dialogue and you know, if you can listen to people having a discussion, you might be able to get something out of it. It's incredibly difficult to make a living playing experimental music. So what I would say is, is not don't do it, but be prepared for the fact that it's a difficult path to walk. If you're gonna bother to do it, you should do it because you need to. <laughs> All I can say is, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years and it's been a struggle but the thing is, is that I've learned a lot about myself. And like I said, I think I've learned a lot about being a human being as well as an artist. And like, to me, it's invaluable, but it's not valuable to me in terms of like being lucrative. It's, it's valuable to me in terms of experience and like being alive. You have to do it because you love the music, not because you care about how many people are gonna be at your show or. Anything external to like just the activity of doing it. It's gonna screw you up. When, when you have, you know, so much of yourself invested in it, sometimes there are points where it seems like an affront, like some situation you're in seems like an actual affront to your being. Like, music can get really intense to that point when you have so much invested in it. But isn't that part of the great thing about it? Like, you go see something real, like you see some real emotions or you see some real expression. That's the dangerous aspect of it. The music that I love has some kind of, like, volatility to it. That's what I like in music. I mean, I, I try to make the music I would want to listen to. And if I wasn't making this music, I'd be seeking it out, you know. But at the same time, I feel like I have some things to say that aren't being said by other people, and that's why I bother, because I, I want to say something that is pertinent to me, and I hope that other people can get something out of it. But mostly it's for me. <laughs> <laughs>